Sunday, August 14th. Trust your weekend is going good. Thought I would do this. Actually, wasn't going to actually do any update, but I've had a couple of you who have actually alerted to me, and I've seen this myself, uh, to what's actually going on here in the Southern Hemisphere. We have this vortice that has formed, but the one that I have been watching, and so have many of you as well, is this one right over Australia. And we have seen this blossom just become very intense. Uh, the wind speeds are, well, you can see here, 468 kilometers. That's getting up around the 285, I think 290, 290 miles an hour. Um, wind speed here picking up, it's 151 kilometers. And at the center of this storm, you can see uh, virtually no wind at all. And I still wonder, since space is all around our planet, our planet is, you know, operating within a vacuum, if space is indeed a vacuum, the question I always wonder, is it possible that we could be pulling the vacuum of space down from these very upper regions of our atmosphere? Don't know. It's just the thought that I had. But when we begin to see this, um, let me get this and expand this out on the equator view. You can see just the disruptions. I don't know. So let's see what's going on down at the 250 millibar level. Well, I think it could be deduced that this fracture into the southern uh, polar hemisphere jet stream could be as a result of what we saw at the very upper um, altitudes. But look at this over here. I, I am, we have seen this and, and fortunately we're starting to get a good database now, although it may be very recent, at least to what we can begin to see um, from our own records. So I would say that that's an intermixing of the uh, northern polar jet stream down in here into the southern. As to the rest of this in here, it's, it's obviously... <laughs> well, if, if we were a traffic cop, I think <laughs> we're in a... A heck of a mess here. But is what we're seeing, for instance, um, here happening over well, here's where all that rain is at. Look at that. I hadn't noticed that before. Hmm. Look at this. You have a convergence of two wind streams coming down and focusing right over this area that has just been devastated and decimated by unprecedented rain. And look at this. So this is the water temperature map. So that's 30.7 degrees Celsius, out about 88 degrees. But you can go right over here now and you can see 
a drop in the water temperature and I wonder if that is a result of all the rain in that area. So I thought I'd add a little new feature. This is the current radiation map. It actually has the world. I'll leave a link below. And basically anything, as you can see here, within a 5 to 28 range is normal. Um, when you start seeing these incidents, that means there, there is an incident and you can actually click on to these and where's one up here the Northeast uh, Atlanta but when you have something like over here in San Jose that's getting above that 28 something to uh, could be industrial medical it's hard to say and that's really not that far above uh, the range of norm. But again, thought it'd be kind of a cool tool for you to have, and you never know. So I thought I'd add this. This is where all of us are today in relationship to our little piece of the Milky Way, of which, if you don't know this, uh, we are really out in the boonies. Um, people don't get out these far, out in these parts. We are really out there. So we have a pretty unique situation, but I just thought that maybe if we can start putting into relationship uh, what's happening to our weather, to what's happening to our solar system, and understand it's all connected, and it's all connected by magnetism. And speaking of which, I thought I'd just show these very quickly. We have a very normal day. Um, our magnetosphere is calm, handling everything that comes its way. So make a note of this, everyone. This is what a pretty normal magnetosphere looks like. Uh, again, our Earth is handling it just fine, and you can see there is a little bit of a shock wave here, but again, nothing unusual here. These, these graphs are really important um, because it really tells us the condition of what our magnetic um, core is doing. What is the Earth's relationship to what the Sun is? And again, everything is connected electrically. That's by magnetism. And here, I've actually been reading this. Again, very normal, strong magnetosphere. Doing just fine. These are, these lines emanating out from the Earth's core, these are actually our signature. Consider it kind of um, the Earth's unique signature in uh, relationship to the Sun, to the planets, to our solar system, uh, to our galaxy, to our universe. Uh, very normal. Um, these are outside influences. So you can see a very strong, very normal um, situation. We should remember this because I believe the time is coming where we will see exactly what an erratic signature looks like. And here, this is very important as well. This is the sun. This is the solar wind coming in. And again, it's a very calm day in um, our solar system. Um, our Earth is handling it just fine. This is very normal. Uh, so again, remember these because I do believe the time is forthcoming where we will see uh, a very different pattern. So as many of you know, there was a huge explosion on our star yesterday and I wanted to show you this so I set this back till uh, the 10th and it's advancing pretty quickly you know this is what I'm always in awe of is just seeing what's out there now this is this is moving pretty fast but as you can see 
space is really full. It's active. It has strange things in there. There's things passing by you wouldn't even recognize if you didn't take the time. So, yeah, it just um, becomes really fascinating to me. Now, I'm going to slow this down and watch what happens up here. Uh, you can see what Ben uh, shows over there at uh, Suspicious Observers, as he pointed out. Folks, this is impressive. And let's just slow this down. Here we go. And watch this. By the way, when you slow this down, you really see how much stuff is really out there. But watch this. Uh, this was a huge filament release. And it no doubt will send uh, its... Wow, I just saw something there. I'll have to go back and look at that. But it's it will have its... Felt its effect throughout our solar system and definitely out beyond. Here it comes. Look at that. I want to stop that. So there it is. That is just huge. A lot of ejecta. A lot of solar excited matter there and thank God it did not hit towards Earth so something we'll need to be uh, always aware of because if something like that was headed for us it'd be a bad day someone had asked as well since we saw the Earth's uh, magnetic signature this is our star and if you see these lines these are the lines, folks, that go out and connect with the Earth, other planets, I believe, even potentially other dwarf stars that are out there in the KBO, uh, the Kuiper Belt, excuse me. Uh, I do believe that this is an active um, live rail. So... We know as well, it's being well, well documented. I think Ben Davidson's doing an exceptionally good job on proving the science that what happens here happens on Earth. And if there's something that's really going on in a magnetism way uh, and it's heading towards Earth, and many times it doesn't have to be even facing Earth. The lines of uh, connectivity can in fact uh, intercross each other. So again, uh, this is what it looks like. I'll continue to leave these links for you so you can actually go and do this own research for yourself. And I thought, why not? Let's just go ahead and do a close on the ISS. Always my favorite place. It's what I always call the fun house because nothing is what it appears to be. And again, I'm assuming that this is a sunset, sunrise, I don't know. I often always wonder about these little things is how our sun can project such a defined, definitive focal point of light. I mean, what the freak must be happening to the inhabitants underneath there? I don't know. <laughs> And so as I sign off, here's our other view of, from the other side of the space station. Many times, I tell you, I think there are two different craft up there because sometimes it don't make sense what they're showing. So anyway, folks, uh, have a good day and uh, we'll talk soon.